Hello, this is video number 10. I'll be going over the kinematic equations in this video. So up to now we've been talking about the various kinematic quantities such as distance, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration, and time. And now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and put them together into some useful equations so that we can solve a lot of problems. Because as of now we can only solve problems involving average velocity and average acceleration. So for example, what if we know the acceleration, we know how fast we started, and we know how far we went, and we want to know how long it took to get there. Then we need some other equations that would relate these variables. So we have four kinematic equations in this table here, and they're actually derived from the equations that we already know. I don't want to spend time deriving all of these equations, but just to let you know, just to look at this first one really quickly, if you remember the equation for average acceleration is change in velocity, so Vf minus Vi over T. Well, you can see if you multiply by time and add V initial, then you're going to get Vf equals V initial plus A average times T. So the only difference with this kinematic equation is that the average sign has been removed from the acceleration and this is because all of these equations apply for constant acceleration. That means that throughout the problem the acceleration is not changing, which means that the average acceleration is equal to the instantaneous acceleration at any time. So when I'm using these equations, I like to think of these five variables. Now a lot of people won't know what in the world we're talking about because you can break apart, for example, delta x, you can break it down into x final and x initial because change in x is equal to x final minus initial. So you could say, well, there are six variables because delta x is really two variables. But I just like to think of these five variables. And then if you know three of these variables and you're looking for one of the other ones, then you'll be able to use one of these kinematic equations to solve your problem. Now there is one combination of variables that's not true for which you have to use two equations, but most of the time you just have to use one equation. So for example, let's say that you, I have this used variable column. This means that you know three of these four variables, V initial, V F, A, and T. You know three out of four, and you're looking for the fourth one. If that's the case, if these are the variables that you care about, and that means you're going to use this kinematic equation because it's the only one that has all four variables. That means that the problem does not ask for delta x, it doesn't care about delta x. And likewise with the rest of the equations, you can see in the second equation, you don't care about a final velocity. It doesn't appear in the equation, you care about the other four variables. Third equation, you don't care about acceleration. And in the fourth equation, you don't care about time. So if you don't care about V initial, then you're going to have to use a combination of two equations in order to solve your problem. So I have a few steps here. How do we solve problems? So first of all, it's got to be a constant acceleration problem, which is going to be the case for all of these problems that we're going to deal with. The acceleration is not going to change throughout the problem. And right now we're dealing with one dimensional motion problems. So what we're going to want to do is write down our given variables, also our known variables, and convert them as necessary to the SI units. Once you've identified three out of five variables, then you know that you're good to go. And also keep track of which variable that you're looking for. Step number two says find that kinematic equation that has those three given variables plus the desired one, the one that you don't know. And once you find that equation, just by going through it to make sure that it has the four variables, the three givens and the one unknown. Then you can solve for your unknown variable. And then I like to plug in the numbers and solve at the last minute. Let's do an example here. A car is driving with a speed of 30 kilometers an hour. The driver accelerates at two meters per second squared until the car reaches a final velocity of 50 kilometers per hour. How long did the acceleration process last? So the first step, if we go back here, was write down your givens. 
three out of those five variables. So we have this speed here of 30 kilometers per hour, and we know that the driver then accelerates, so this must be the initial velocity. So we're, when we write down our givens, we always write down the variable and then the number. Convert if necessary. We do need to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second. So to do the conversion here, we've done this one before. We have 1,000 meters in one kilometer. And then we have one hour. We have 3,600 seconds. See that I'm making sure that the variables cancel out, the kilometers cancel, the hours cancel. 30 times 1,000 divided by 3,600 is going to equal about 8.3 meters per second. And then we're going to do the same thing. We have a final velocity. So we're going to need to convert that 50 kilometers per hour as well. So multiply by the same thing here, 1,000 meters for one kilometer, 3,600 seconds for one hour, multiply by this whole, the exact same conversion factors, and we'll get about 13.9. Again, I'm rounding on, on here, but in my final answer, I'm not rounding until the very end. And then we are also given the acceleration is two meters per second squared. That's already in the standard unit, so we're good there. And then we're looking how long did it last, so we're looking for time. And then the second step, if we go back to the steps here, said find the kinematic equation that has those three variables plus the unknown. So the three variables that we just wrote down were V initial, V final, A, and we're looking for time. So if you go through the kinematic equations here, the first one actually has those four exact variables. So that means that we're going to use this first equation here. We're going to write it down. That's what step two says. So step two says write down the equation Vf is V initial plus AT. Then step three says solve for the unknown variable. We're looking for time. So I'll do step three over here. So we just want to get it by itself. So that means we need to subtract V initial from each side. And then we need to divide by acceleration. So we're going to get T equals VF minus VO over A. So that's all the step number three says. And then finally, the last step says plug in the known values and then solve. It's just a personal preference of mine that I like to put in the numbers at the end. It tends to reduce errors. So now we're plugging in the numbers. So 13.9 meters per second minus 8.3 meters per second. Again, I'm using the unrounded values when I plug these in my calculator, divided by two. And when I do this, I get approximately 2.8 seconds. So that's our final answer. So I have one more example here. A car is three kilometers east of Greenville, is driving east with a speed of 30 kilometers per hour. The driver accelerates at two meters per second squared. Where is the car after five minutes? So let's go through the same process. The first step is to write down the givens. Now, this one's a little bit confusing because you might think, oh, well, this is kilometers, it's three kilometers, so that's displacement. But that's just his initial position. So it's the car's initial position. So that's actually x initial, which is not one of the five variables that I like. To write down, but we'll still write it down. It's still going to be useful. We can go ahead and convert kilometers to meters. So, in 1,000 meters in one kilometer, so it's 3,000 meters. Now we do have an initial speed or velocity of 30 kilometers per hour. Since this is the exact number that I used in my, the previous problem, I will skip the conversion. We already saw that 30 kilometers per hour is equal to 8.3 meters per second in the previous example. And then we have an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. So you might think, oh, we got three variables, we're good to go. But remember, this x initial is not one of the three. But we're also given, after five minutes, we're also given a time. 
So five minutes, we're going to convert that to seconds. There are 60 seconds in one minute. So that's going to be 300 seconds. So these three, V initial, A and T, those are the three that I like to have written down. And then what we're looking for, where is the car? We're looking for the final position. We're looking for X final. Again, that's not one of the five, but what you notice is that delta X is closely related to this because delta X is X final minus X initial. So this is actually a two-step problem. What we're going to be looking for is delta X. That's going to be our unknown. And then once we find delta X, then we can come back up here and say, okay, well, our final position will be delta X plus the X initial. But for now, we need to identify which kinematic that we're, equation we're going to use that has these three variables, V initial, A, T, and delta X. So let's look back and see. V initial, A, T, delta X, this is our second equation. So we're going to go ahead and write down the second equation. Second equation says delta X is equal to V initial times T plus one half a t squared. And then solve for the unknown. Well, the unknown is delta x, so it's already solved for. So plug in the values. So 8.3 meters per second times 300 seconds plus one half times two meters per second squared. I'm gonna skip the unit so I have room here. And then the time is 300 squared. And the units will cancel out. You'll get, you'll end up with meters here. Here you have meters per second squared multiplied by second squared. So you'll end up with meters. As long as you have converted in your givens, you'll end up with the correct unit at the end. And so for delta x, we end up getting 9,200 5, 92, meters. Now just don't get too happy and stop here. Remember, that the problem is actually asking for the final position. So now we got to do one more step and say, well, that final position is going to be delta x plus the x initial, according to this equation here. So now we have to add 3,000 meters to the 92,500 meters to get 9,500 9, meters. So that's our final answer right here. That is our final position. So that was all for this video. So just a reminder, we're going to do a lot of problems with kinematic equations. We'll actually do a lot more examples in the following video that's on free fall. So this was just kind of a, a start getting used to using these equations. So just remember that you need three out of those five variables, delta x, v initial, v final, acceleration, or time. You need three out of those five. You're looking for one of the other ones. Find the correct equation and just plug the numbers in.